Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Witness and I'm your host, Katrina Hussain. Is the Pakistan People's Party in a state of denial? There are challenges facing the ruling party from virtually every direction, whether it be Memogate or what appears to be emerging forward blocks, dissidents within the party, all issues that the People's Party tends to brush off by saying our government will survive. In fact, Prime Minister Yusuf Reza Galani today, talking about Memogate, said our government will survive. So is that the really only issue for the People's Party? Survival of the government? That's important. We're not saying it's not. But perhaps we also need to consider that democracy needs to deliver to be accepted by the people. Today, nurses were tear gassed, baton charged in Lahore. They were demanding their rights and what makes me absolutely livid is that the shopkeepers of the area joined in by pelting eggs on the protesting nurses. We understand that their business was being damaged, but surely that should not have been allowed either. So there are multiple issues, that, complex issues that face this country, and yet we find a state of total denial from the ruling coalition, of which, of course, the leader is the Pakistan People's Party. And then add to the mix, the opposition seems to be playing a very careful, cautious role, particularly the Pakistan Muslim League N, where Mr. Nawaz Sharif comes out swinging at rallies, Mr. Shabaz Sharif is very aggressive, and then there seems to be a hiatus while they seem to be trying to assess what is going on. And throw into that volatile mix, Mr. Imran Khan and Pakistan Tari Kensaf. Today, Mr. Imran Khan addressed a large rally in Chakwal where he, of course, took the same line that he takes at all his rallies. The government has to go. The PMLN has to go. Mr. Imran Khan wants the status quo to be changed. And if that was not enough, you have Shah Mahmood Qureshi, the former foreign minister of Pakistan. Mr. Imran Khan on this program last week said he was, he was hopeful that Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi will be joining his party. Shah Mahmood Qureshi yesterday met with PMLN leader Nawaz Sharif, and he says he will take his final decision on Sunday in Ghotki which, of course, he will have to take a decision. And you're going to say she's not going to keep quiet, but one more. Where is the PML like-minded in all this? Luckily, we have somebody from uh, that party with us as well, and we will ask them what their plans are. Allow me to introduce my guest on that note. My first guest, Navisa Shah, an m &A from the ruling Pakistan People's Party. My second guest today, Mr. Nasir Bhutta. He is an m &A from the Pakistan Muslim League N. My third guest in the studio today is Mr. Humayu Akhtar Khan, who is the Secretary General of the PML Like Minded, the party that I mentioned earlier. And we hope that Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi will also join us on the phone and tell us what he is thinking about. Um, Ms. Shah, we'll begin with you. It is a complex situation we see over here where Shah Mahmood Qureshi is not only talking about, has already left the party very publicly, resigned from the National Assembly, left the CEC, left the party. Now he has to announce his political future. And the third option, which is also available to him, is that of forming his own party. And apparently he believes that he can take a substantial amount of MPAs, if not MNAs, along with him. And on the other fr uh, front, we have the issue with Dr. Zulfkar Mirza, the former Sindh Home Minister, who hasn't said he's forming a forward bloc, but certainly seems to be behaving like he is. What's going on with the People's Party? You guys seem to be splitting in all different directions and factions. Uh, thank you, Katrina. I think these are two individuals, uh, and it's not the party. And when individuals step out of the party, then they don't, uh, you know, that, then you, these, these are exceptions. You can't, you know, consider these as rules and consider that, you know, the party structure or party uh, uh, is a threat. I don't think so. I, we've, uh, and every, every, every big party goes through that, people stepping in, stepping out. And if there have but been there people, are people who are they, saying they're going to move with chunks with them. It's but that, that has to be seen. That has to be seen. Um, we have at seen the same Sir time, people, having to resign his position already yeah, because of see, support in for cabinets in the in the life of a government. There are several changes uh, uh, that are made. Ministers come in. Others are um, there are new appointments and so on. And that 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 goes with the flow and looking at the context. So I don't think that that's that's an issue. Um, so I, I is this wishful think, thinking? I mean, I'm going to be blunt. No, is no, this it's not. Thinking, yeah? uh, it's not. It's just as I said, two two individuals. And if you look at Sindh, I mean. Uh, the, 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 the MPAs reinforce their commitment to the party. And uh, Zulfkar Mirza himself also says that he's in the party, so he has not left it. He I would consider that his case is different from Shah Mahmood's. 
and Shama Mahmood is a one-off case. And at the same time, there are several new entrants in the party. There have been cousins of uh, 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 the opposition leader who've just joined the party. There are a lot of people who are, so the party is growing every day. There may be some who are leaving, but there are several more who are coming. So I don't think that one could take this as something to say that, you know, the, the entire party is sort of reeling or something like that. I, I think that, uh, that reeling, the confidence, if you see how the Prime Minister spoke to the media today, the, the party is fairly confident. Uh, the coalition is fine. Uh, the coalition, uh, they, they stand together uh, and they are ready to meet the challenges as and when they come and there are plenty. I, I wouldn't disagree no, with God, that. Yes. Um, but also I think that, that the People's Party has those nerves and that patience to face those challenges. People's Party has the nerves to face a challenge. Mr. Bhutta, obviously I wonder exactly what uh, gives the People's Party this tremendous confidence. If I was in the People's Party, I'd be pretty frantic. But um, <laughs> part of the reason why I think the People's Party does rest easy is that the PMLN is not consistent with maintaining level and even the applied pressure. It's sort of a boxing match. You come dancing out, one woomph back in the corner. Um, what's going on here with the PMLN? <laughs> Nothing is going on. Rather, uh, I'm in... Uh, what uh, has been said by Nafisa, at the same time, People's Party is in a very um, high level of confidence. I believe if uh, the confidence is of such uh, capacity, then of course there, there's no need with the Prime Minister to take the floor of the House daily and to say that our government is not going, we'll complete our tenure. I believe that this is a kind of version which normally is um, <coughs> uttered when there is something uh, fishy or something wrong in the bottom and okay. uh, because I don't think otherwise this repetition is needed normally but tell uh, me who asked the Prime Minister uh, as to whether his government is going or not not normally it is uh, there is a there was there are some issues on the floor of the house today um, uh, leader of the opposition he raised the issue of mm -hmm. the memo and then uh, said that as to why the Prime Minister is not uh, responding to that very important issue which is one of the most important one we now will return to the memo. whole of the life yeah I'm going to come to the memo, but here, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Imran Khan likes to use cricket terms. I'll use an aviation term. Is the opposition in a holding pattern? You know, sort of just circling, circling and not deciding whether they're going to land or fly to another destination. I mean, you know, wh what's going on with the opposition? Ab absolutely. Uh, we are, uh, in fact, uh, we are having a total confidence uh, the way we are proceeding because we always uh, take the issues. We always uh, discuss the issues. And if, uh, if somebody is having a, everybody is having a right to come to the public, to have a congregation, to have the mass uh, uh, movement and everything. But the one thing is very much important and uh, significant, that the stance taken by PMLN, that stance is going to be chased and followed by the rest of the people who are uh, Mr. Sharma Mahmood Qureshi, like that. Mr. Mahmood Qureshi told Mr. Nawaz Sharif yesterday, and this has been reported and acknowledged by your party, that the PMLN has the option of resigning from the Punjab Assembly, resigning from the National Assembly, and forcing the issue with the People's Party. Where is it? Why is, what's the reluctance? What, all I hear from S. N. Iqbal, for example, was, um, what is that? We will do that when the time is right. When is the time going to be right? This is our stance right from the beginning, that if at some moment, if some time, an appropriate time, if it is needed that even if we are supposed to resign, we'll have to resign. That doesn't make any difference because we have to go uh, with the people of Pakistan, where, where, how to resolve the problems of the people of Pakistan. We are having 92 seats or 93 seats in the National Assembly. We are sitting in the National Assembly doing the politics of the issues one by one if there is supposing. Supposing we come just now out of the assembly, so meaning thereby some people can say and figure out that uh, you did not resolve the issues on the floor of the house. First, we will have to invoke every possible effort and every possible mayor at the and floor of the house. And you still have some at some the floor of the house. Okay, you still have some wiggle room. We now. have an option option with us. Probably, I think this is a uh, this is a his stance, uh, which is which may be correct that justly and uh, quickly we are supposed to resign as he has resigned and we we do have a respect for for his ideas the way he has uh, you know uh, taken exception to the uh, stance of the people's party and uh, taken exception to the to his own parent party but at the same time he has shown his quite independent uh, view nowadays and in this regard i think that this is our stance that we will have to resign at a, an at an ap ap appropriate time and 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 with a view to see that how to sensitize the issues 
of the public at large, the way the public has been gripped. I assure you, the public problems. is very sensitized to their problems. Oh, yes, know. of course. We know what they our problems have. are. Mr. Humayun Uthar Khan, uh, your party, your faction of the PML, uh, has still not officially declared themselves as to which side of the fence you're going to be on, whether it's going to be the Pakistan Muslim League and whether it's going to be the Pakistan Tehreeke Insaf. At one point, it looked like your party was just on the verge of announcing some kind of alliance with a PMLN, if not a merger altogether. And yet now we are hearing rumors that you're actually talking to Imran Khan and Tariq and Saf. Well, there's no rush. So, uh, I mean, I don't know why we all are thinking that there is an election 90 days away. It seems like there's an election 90 uh, days away when you look at your TV screen, you know, all the rallies yeah, 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 and the yeah, rallies but, and the rallies. But, but, but there isn't one right now. Uh, we, we have been in negotiations um, off and on uh, for uh, a considerable period of time with the PTI uh, and uh, we are in serious negotiations with the PMLN. Uh, it has what are you negotiating it, for? It, has, it, has, it is our desire that the Muslim League vote bank should not split and that desire takes us uh, to negotiate with PMLN. <clears throat> and it is that desire to uh, bring about change um, in the country and that uh, 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 takes us to Mr. Imran Khan. Uh, but uh, uh, we will, we will uh, come out uh, soon and, and announce what we uh, intend to do. Uh, but I don't think that we are in any kind of uh, any, uh, a rush or uh, we're anxious to strike a deal right away. I'd like to follow up a little bit on that. I understand that you're saying you're not in a rush, but one of the concerns, obviously, that um, we are looking at as outsiders, we, we look at the, the game. You know, we look at it as sort of a chess, political chess, if you can call it that way. Imran Khan right now is emerging as a viable force in politics, which he wasn't earlier. Uh, let's be very honest about that. But when you say you don't want a Pakistan Muslim League vote bank to be split, one of the potential problems is that Mr. Khan will, Mr. Imran Khan, will potentially split the vote bank of not just the PMLN, but also the People's Party. We don't know exactly where he's drawing this kind of support. I was watching the rally in Chakwal today, and it looked like pretty mainstream uh, kind of regular political workers that you normally see at rallies. The law rally was different. If you, your party, your faction, chosen its lot with one or the other, it would at least give us some kind of stability to the role that the opposition now needs to play in the next few months, whenever the election happens within a year or two, a uh, year and a half. Uh, Mr. Imran Khan is definitely uh, going to be a factor. To let, me re let me be nasty. Is he going to be a spoiler? Well, uh, let me answer you, Katrina. He will be a factor, definitely to be reckoned with uh, whenever a <clears throat> either a local body election takes place or a general election takes place uh, he, he, he will become the second or third preference of the candidates depending on which area you're talking about uh, which will result in uh, a party being created because there are about you know there are, there are in all about 500,000 political workers in this country and uh, about 300,000 are in the rural areas, 200 in urban cities and out of that 200, uh, about 100,000 are in the five big cities of mm. Pakistan. Now, once he starts getting the thousand or so odd candidates, uh, uh, he will be able to pull those workers towards his party. So. An election definitely will result in the consolidation of Mr. Imran Khan's party. Now, uh, you, you're absolutely right. So far, people have heard that, well, Imran Khan will just damage the uh, PML vote bank. Uh, uh, I'm happy to see that you've said in that. In effect, will, will benefit the will people's party. Now, because uh, candidates will go towards him too, uh, definitely the People's Party vote bank would also be affected. Hmm. Uh, now, to what extent, we, we do not know uh, uh, right now. Uh, now, Mr. Khan has to be uh, very specific about his message. The message is about change, change of status quo, 
but Mr. Khan should realize that uh, the upper middle class, the urban upper middle class, one, is very impatient. Mm -hmm. This upper middle class went and supported Pervez Musharraf. Yes. Then went and supported the lawyers against Pervez Musharraf. Absolutely. Then went and voted for Nawaz Sharif in 2008. So it's an impatient lot and not exactly a very uh, loyal <laughs> lot. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> we have to see how fast Mr. Imran is able to, what I just described yeah. at the beginning of my co conversation, um, the, 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 the political activist of this country, how far, uh, if and when mm. he's able to pull that towards him. And number two is, is a message. Fine, uh, you want to end corruption, uh, you want change, and you want the Americans mm -hmm. out, and, uh, and uh, all, all types of good things. But the message has to be more specific. I mean, people say that, you see, Mr. Mr. Zulfakar Ali Bhutto, uh, <coughs> He, he generated appeal <coughs> because his was a class war. <coughs> yes. uh, I mean, he, he, he raised the lowest tier Absolutely. of the society and said, okay, you, you are something too, so stand up to the landlord or stand up to the factory owner. Uh, I mean, uh, and that is why he's still alive today. Mm. Okay? Uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif capitalized on the anti-people pa party vote bank, mm -hmm. which, which initiated in the PNA movement of 1977, which was then consolidated, sort of in, right in, way, consolidated yeah. in the uh, Islami General Zawal Haq regime. And now uh, Nawaz Sharif is not only heading the, the Muslim League vote bank, but also a major oh. chunk of the right. religious, the religious, religious he's, like vote he's, bank. He's got, so, he's got no, that, that right. middle I'm class. To, I'm trying to distinguish. Yeah. Now, Mr. Imran Khan, if he wants... Uh, any kind of consistency in his politics or want to make a lasting change, uh, he'll have to address these issues as to what, what you see, Pervez Musharraf, Pervez Musharraf, uh, after nine years, what did he leave us with? What kind of politics? He left us with no party because Pervez Musharraf said, well, the PMLN is not good and the People Party is not good. Yeah. And uh, uh, so I will pull people from both sides and see uh, you know, enlightened moderation yeah. can, can and I this just and that. Throw but in that, another but question that, here? But, but Katrina, that didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work. And that is why we, we are where we are today. Let so me let's see how, how, let's see how deep and lot long lasting Mr. Khan's message okay. is. Okay. Just uh, one two question. I'm going to toss it, uh, uh, bring it back, but briefly. Also, we have Jahangir Tareen, one of your former colleagues, talking about a clean party. <laughs> He's not part of your faction. He seems to be running uh, with a separate group uh, of people. So, you know, we are looking at splintering of Mr. all the... Mr. Tareen, Mr. Tareen, look, uh, uh, we recognize a political group when they come out in the open, in public. Okay. So, let's see what they say and what the message is and how many people come out with him in the public. Okay. We're yeah. going to take a short break over here. Of course, I have to add to that. A lot of people may not realize this, but Daniel Aziz, the former chairman of the National Reconstruction Bureau, he seems to have launched his own party, which seems to be predicated on a very narrow focus, which is that of re-establishing local government. He is holding rallies and seems to be attracting quite a lot of people. Is Pakistan's political landscape heading for a major earthquake here? Something that's going to hit 8 or 9 on the Richter scale? That's what we're going to talk about. But after a short break, please stay with us. And welcome back to Witness. Before the break, I talked about an earthquake facing Pakistan's political landscape in the break. Everybody kind of here laughed and let's get find out why they did. Uh, Ms. Shah, uh, um, no earthquake on the horizon, not even minor tremors? Well, I think they're more ripples, as ripples. I said. So it's more of a pond with small ripples. Little, small little... Uh, I, I, would, I would classify it more than a ripple, by the way. Maybe one, one or two waves, ripple. one or two waves, but they'll... Uh, not, uh, more than ripples. More than ripples. Mr. Bhutta, let's talk about something very, very significant over here. Uh, on a larger framework, when you look at it, I've always been fascinated by the fact that Pakistan's political parties are sort of the alphabet soup is entirely covered, I think, except for the letter X or Y or Z. <laughs> but we cover a gamut of political parties. And at one time, it looked like the political structure of Pakistan was sort of settling into a two-party system. And that's fracturing again. Is that good or bad? No, Katrina, I don't think so. The, there will be no two-political party system here in Pakistan. It will yet go for a long period of time. I mean, uh, for uh, at least uh, three to four decades, 
because um, uh, e even uh, in, in, in all the provinces, even in Sindh, in um, yeah, okay, uh, in Rajasthan, in yeah, multiple um, parties, multiple in parties, Punjab, ethnic, religious, everywhere, political sector. There are multiple parties and it will remain for a considerable period of time and they will. Is this good or bad? I think this is God. You think it's God? Uh, this is God. Uh, I don't believe in two-party system. Two, what is two-party system? Okay, why, why not other? <laughs> why not other? Why not everyone is supposed to have his own view and his own uh, uh, slogan and uh, his own following? Okay. And Mr. Mr. Mayu, you have... If I may add, uh, I think a, a two-party system brings more stability in, yes. in the political system. Uh, however, uh, I would encourage a two-party system uh, when we have uh, total democracy within political parties. Yes. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we have autoc autocracies within our political parties. Dynasties. Which has been further consolidated by the 18th Amendment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that is why, that is one reason why we are now seeing a lot of smaller uh, parties uh, uh, yeah. sprouting up. I mean, even the People's okay. Party officially has yeah. a splinter yeah. group, the Pakistan People's Party Shahid Bhutto group. Uh, led by uh, Mursa Bhutto initially and now his widow Gendwa Bhutto. Yeah. So the, the, the splits keep coming and which implies to me, Mr. Mayu Akhtar Khan, that the, the stability that we need on, on larger issues simply doesn't happen because everybody has their own particular interest. One is because of lack of democracy, <coughs> I'll repeat it again, within uh, the, the political party we see a lot of these uh, smaller parties um, taking root. Well, it should really just be lobby groups. Yeah. The, the other thing is, yeah, now if this, if, 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 this, groups. if this if this continues, even in a two-party system, it is a pretty difficult thing right now for any political party to come out with 172 seats as yeah. a result of a general election. Yeah. And uh, we have seen two big parties and we have seen that the last two governments at least were coalition governments. Mm -hmm. Now, the larger the number of parties coming uh, into the scene, uh, the larger will be the coalitions, ruling coalitions taking place. And it will be very difficult. I mean, this country is very difficult to govern in the first place. <laughs> to put it mildly, okay? yes. And with, with huge coalitions, I mean, it will almost be an impossible task to govern this country. Yeah, that, that's a tricky part. I mean, sure, one of the, of course, crucial points over here, I've, I've talked about forward blocks in the uh, People's Party. Are they emerging? Are they not emerging? But the challenges for your government are piling up. And I want now to return to Memogate. Memogate is definitively uh, possibly one of the most serious scandals, and I use the word scandals with very deliberate use here. The Prime Minister has called for an inquiry, but the terms of reference of the inquiry have not been made available. The, as a special investigator, I mean, you know, the words that are being thrown around seems to imply to us that this is just another exercise in it'll blow over, let's just ignore it. People's Party seems to excel at waiting for things to blow over. Uh, Katrina, I would say that in the past three years, and uh, definitely everyone would agree that we inherited uh, a lot of difficulties. Uh, we've been through uh, a, a lot of challenges and I don't think that this is, you know, necessarily, um, I mean, we've faced far more serious challenges. Uh, we faced, uh, I, I would say we faced floods, uh, both metaphoric and, and, and literal. We faced wars, both metaphoric and literal. And we continue to, uh, to face them. And now they're metaphoric of the, and literal uh, fingers pointing <coughs> to the President of Pakistan saying Article 6, Article 6, what? treason. But this thing has happened before, and they said, let the inquiry come. come. And, I, and I think the whole idea, the the whole idea like again, there is a lot of media his, hysteric, hyster, hysterics and histrionics, both. Uh, every time it's always like, you know, it's always a molehill out, out of a mountain uh, situation at the end of it. Uh, and uh, there have been instances far worse in, in the past. This is an unsolicited, unstamped, unrecognized, n uh, what is called a non-paper in diplomatic terms. And we're ma making mountain out of a molehill. Okay, but having said that, having said that, having said that, I, I still think that, yes, we, we cannot dismiss this issue as if, you know, it, it is a serious issue. And let us let us come up with, uh, but it is too but serious an issue. Why should we, it is why too should serious we take the intention of this government seriously it, it, when it, the government it, is not even being clear no, no. about what form the inquiry is going the to take? The government is being cautious. It is too serious an issue to speculate on. It is too serious an issue to raise unnecessary temperatures on. We're facing I'm just asking about problems. the composition of the inquiry. 
I am not in a position to answer that. I think that's the prerogative of the government. Let the government come up with those answers. But there, that, that commitment but has been made. Michelle, and I'm sure it will be there. It is, it is, it is, uh, one has to be cautious. It has to be carefully selected. And I'm sure whatever it would be, there has been a commitment made by the Prime Minister. Uh, and also today, we heard you know, the, uh, the leaders of the party also but saying the that it, it would, like the it, it, exactly. it would uh, well, that's still not over, it is was it? was a very powerful that, commission. That, that is still, but again, it was constituted by the parliament to the satisfaction of the parliament as well. Well, so, that doesn't uh, mean that it was right, I mean, it hasn't resulted in anything. So well, here, yeah, the parliament is not involved, it's a parliament, parliament is not involved. involved. Is see, you see, it's Nothing very important, and perhaps that's, you know, that's why it's very important to be cautious before and not to raise the temperature and come up with all kinds of speculations. I, I, I think uh, speculation, we really don't need to worry about. The, uh, there's a fact. A memo was written. Obviously, it has been received by some uh, General Jim Jones delivered which it to Admiral Mike Mullen. Which was earlier which tonight. Which was earlier tonight. Well, a uh, memo uh, was I, written. I Nafisa we dispute the authorship. Word. Yeah. It was not a memo. Memo is usually signed. This was a non paper. Anonymous letter. The, no, the, no, it wasn't anonymous. It was a non paper. It was a, a non paper. paper. It, was a paper. It, has no, it, has no, it had no title, no signature. Right. But the guy who took the dictation and gave it to General Jones, says that alleged. such and such, alleges that, uh, that's alleged, the right yeah. word, the alleges that of the such letter and such is person addition. dictated and told him yeah. that he has the nod from the top. Yeah. yeah. So what we do have, uh, the on, only dispute is the authorship of this non-letter and who instigated it. Everything so either Mansouri right Jaws or Hussein Haqqani. Right, one of the right two is Right now there is no, the there is no valid... Of, um, Hakani, I don't think uh, now this is uh, going to be an issue. That but who is uh, to be a director or who is yeah. supposed under, to be a director. Under, one, under one what law? No. Mr. Patel, you're a lawyer. The General Jones. The point arises as to, why, as to whether uh, Hakani was the only person. Let me, uh, uh, but, you're but a lawyer. Did it, uh, 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 let me, let me. General, General Jones, uh, the former uh, National Security Advisor, star yeah. general and uh, secure, National Security Advisor of President Bush, I think, yeah. uh, came on record, said he got the memo, he delivered it to uh, Gen Gen Admiral, uh, Mullen. Uh, Admiral Mullen, who first denied and then recollected his memory and said right. he did receive it. And it ended up with Mr. Uh, Leon Panetta, who at that time was... Uh, Secretary of Defense or CIA? Uh, I don't remember. He was CIA. Uh, but the CIA right. had, now is the Secretary of yeah. Defense. Okay. Now, these things have come on record. So, uh, uh, fine, it's, an, it's, it's a non it's a non paper and it doesn't have a signature nor a title. But the U.S. senior U.S. administration personnel have said that, yes, the letter has is, is in existence. Yes. Okay. And there are answers because of the very serious nature of things appearing in of that memo in that. Uh, relating to our uh, uh, nuclear program, our nuclear program, uh, our national security program, relating to our uh, national security institutions, relating to... Uh, the fact that the f foreign powers, uh, no matter how friendly or unf unfriendly they are towards us, they start interfering yeah. in conducting it inquiries was total in this country. Uh, total now the, the issue is enormously serious. I I I respect Hussein Haqqani uh, that he he came back. Yes. And he resigned. This has not happened. Now it is all. Uh, yeah, these are allegations yeah. yet to be proven. He was told to but resign he, though. Well, uh, Katrina, I don't care whether he resigned voluntarily or was told, but he came back, he resigned okay. and is available for an independent inquiry. inquiry. Now, Good. Mr. Butcher, that, that's the I, way I, it should be. That's the way it should uh, be. It has but not been proven, but until you get your name clear, please leave the government okay. position. Uh, uh, well, it's time for me to take a short break here. When we return, Mr. Nasir Bhutta is a lawyer. So I'm going to ask him about this very issue, resignation, demanded or voluntarily proffered. The PM House tells us it was demanded. Um, why would a resignation be demanded? When to give transparency, as Mr. Humayun Akhtar said, to the investigation process. But, and here's a huge but. But I won't say what's the but about until after this break. So you'll have to now stay with us. Welcome back to Witness. Before the break, I said uh, there is a but, and I will put the but right away to Mr. Nasir Bhutta. Mr. Bhutta, you're a lawyer. Um, by resigning, or at least uh, accepting the fact that his resignation was being demanded, does that imply, in legal terms, admission of guilt? Absolutely, absolutely. By in what legal means? Terms. 
By both means, okay. it implies uh, uh, so an ex for shy case. Can that you, if can somebody, you the that somebody can is you going to, if somebody is going to resign himself voluntarily, or if some, uh, if somebody is said to resign, okay, okay, resign. Now there is something ex for shy on the record or on the face of the record, and uh, somebody will have to face the consequences, either penal or um, somewhat uh, kind of inquiry which uh, could result into penal consequences that of what course what would be the normal procedure if like for example i know there's an inquiry uh, pending against somebody in a small office i mean you know i'm just using the comparison the normal practice would be to suspend the, the normal people. practice here is in the in the normal procedure when there is a case of misconduct yeah. against any official hmm. uh, normally he is put under suspension suspension so that means uh, that a person who was, uh, you know, going to perform his duty is no more performing the duty. Right. And he, is, he can potentially be so, reinstated so, if found to be exonerated. Uh, but if he's found not guilty. Of official you know, conduct. Official but conduct. in this, uh, you know, situation, he has been made to resign. Meaning thereby that there are some serious uh, things against uh, the person. Either he himself uh, drew that letter either that was signed or unsigned. So this is again a question mark as to whether it was unsigned, meaning thereby, we know it was not signed. Meaning thereby that uh, there was, it was deliberately not signed and it was deliberately not made to be identified that at some point of time this letter could not be attached to someone. The plausible deniability that Mr. Rajas talks about. This is, this is, this is a motivation behind. Yeah. There is a motive behind as to why it was not signed. Supposing it was not signed. Now it has come on the record that there was a letter because earlier to this there was a clear denial that there was no letter, this was total perception, this was all a media game, yeah. everything like that. Now everything is on the right, on the table. Now for 10 long hours there was a deliberate discussion between uh, the stakeholders. What is the outcome? When we say stakeholders, even the TOR, specify, the Prime Minister, the, the President, of, Mr. Hossein Akani, even, even, the Chief of Army Staff and the DGI side. Even the terms of reference has not been decided. Even for this has inquiry. not been decided who will inquire into the matter. Yet what is interesting and is that the replacement for Mr. Hussain Hakani was announced within 24 hours. Katrina, and the piece of, I want uh, to ask everyone this question, yeah. very simple question. How many of us receive anonymous letters? We all do. Yes. We do it as a matter of routine. Some of them contain all kinds of nonsense. Do we take them seriously? Well, I an official between uh, no, this no, no, and no, an no, anonymous no, no. letter. Right. Okay, okay. They no, are the, the Americans. It's no let more me anonymous. Uh, let it's me it's finish. No, no. Let it's, me finish it's because I. I non signed. Let me, let me just paper, finish my point. Okay, but it's not an anonymous letter. Uh, it, it was it, not anonymous it is, at all. It is Stop. anonymous. If it's not signed, it is anonymous. And the Americans themselves have not taken it seriously. They say. Because it is not signed. Because it's not clear. Let's also look at the points. Just because what, Admiral what was Mullen the response to was, was it, it, extremely it, it, aggressive non against the Pakistan Army. Katrina, a non-paper is an established norm. Anybody can come up with norm. fiction can and I present ask your It's paper. an established norm. A lot let's, of non-papers are issued. I want to come up, come, come up uh, you know, respond to the issue. Misha, I want to ask you a under specific question. Law, under, under what, what law? law is resignation ad admission of guilt? If, I can, if, I, if someone can cite that particular law. This resignation no was okay in a way solicited because the Prime Minister had made a commitment in the Parliament that we, there would be a fair inquiry and he believes why not and, suspend and, him? and he believes that uh, why should you suspend him? So you can reinstate him if he believes that you can innocent. have a fair inquiry if that person no, no, I don't think concerned that is not in this case suspension I, I think it's place. not fair that I'm in not being case, asked uh, the uh, was it's not Ms. fair Ms. that I'm Ms. not Ms. being asked to complete uh, yeah, I'm not being complete, given an opportunity to complete my point the resignation of course he offered also at and and he has been extremely consistent. Although we've heard people changing their statements, he has been extremely consistent. He has denied that he had any role in the memo. However, he said in the interest of the democracy, he's willing to resign. That's the first statement we he heard did. from him. The Prime Minister then subsequently said that he will be asked to explain his position. And in the process, because he committed uh, to an impartial inquiry, the there were all these questions the memo was written in the so interest that, of democracy. Uh, for, for the impartial, for in order to make the Misha, uh, uh, inquiry question, yeah. impartial, Why he solicited Mr. his resignation. Okay. Why was Mr. Hossein Haqqani asked to fall on the sword when he could very well be found innocent? Yet the People's Party wasted no time in appointing another ambassador. A good appointment, Sherry Rahman, I think is a good and choice. I, I have one other question to add. 
add to that. What motive does Mansoor Ajaz have to do all this? We'll can, come to can that. Somebody we'll come to Mansoor Ajaz later. Can somebody but tell why me? Why would the People's Party ask Hussein Haqqani to fall on the sword? Uh, why not just say, Mr. Haqqani, stay in Islamabad or go to your hometown in Look, Karachi this, until this agrees? We, uh, we were just discussing Abbottabad Commission. How long has it taken? Seven months? Weeks, can you months? leave? Can you leave as important a position as the U.S. You can send an acting for seven, for seven for seven months, for eight months. It may take a year. Who knows how long the inquiry would take? And I it may take years together. I don't think, I don't think that, that, is, that is, that is an issue to raise. Together. I think the Oh, yes. Why not? The inter I think the process is important and justice has to be seen to be done. Let it take 10 the years. The more it is delayed, I, 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 I have been elected. Let us not has been treated with extreme injustice and prejudice in that case. Because he may very well be innocent. Justice denied. And, uh, justice denied. Yeah, you've denied, you see, denied him justice. Because, and more because importantly, again, when would, some would, inquiry is going to be conducted, about, some evidence is to be collected. I would talk about the media hype. There have been instances in the past far serious. I will, I will draw your attention to the issue of Cargill, who flew all the way to meet uh, perhaps, uh, you know, the, 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 the U.S. No 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 president. I want to just say one. There have been so many incidents in the past. I would like to respond to the visa. No, you shouldn't. Okay, I'm going to respond to one thing. You shouldn't, as an anchor. You should to collect the evidence. I'm going to say one thing. You're a former journalist. I'm currently a journalist. Washington Post unearthed. Watergate, and it led to President Nixon. So I think the media, has, the way, the was, the media has the right, and you can't deny it. But not for a non-paper. Put it in the media. perspective. They could not, Nafisa, okay. be any Mr. media Mr. Hype, Mr. because there was, at the there time were of Kargil, no channels. there was no free media. Okay, There was no geo, there was no express. So Pardon. We had newspapers. I'm, I'm sorry to say, sitting in we Express, I should not mention the word geo. No, you can mention geo. <laughs> I have friends there too. Have 50, the point I want to make is 50,000 channels now. More than Hosanna Kani, it is now important <coughs> for the People Party <coughs> government and its coalition to clear its name Absolutely. in this memo. It's Absolutely. not Hosanna Kani, it's this Alone. government which has to clear its name. Very important. Yes. And Mr. Patel, uh, you, your party, your leader, Nawaz Sharif, personally has put his name to the petition uh, in the Supreme Court on this. <coughs> but this is a very, very tricky part. The Supreme Court will take its time on this issue. And the People's Party doesn't have the most flawless record when it comes to implementing Supreme Court decisions. So what exactly are you hoping to achieve by that petition? I think uh, with, the, with this petition, uh, of course, um, at the same time when we see that we have to go to the Supreme Court, we have to sensitize the issue. And we, at the same time, uh, when we see that even at the floor of the House, the Prime Minister is not vocal to come out to give the statement that, of course, as, as to in what way the whole direction is going to be set. And after the resignation of Hakani is, uh, of the ambassador, uh, what uh, next step is going to be taken? Then, of course, there was an only option to go into the Supreme Court. And okay. we are very categorical okay. in that petition. And I literally have we a minute. We are very, very here. categorical in that petition that in the, this is to be determined as to who is responsible. Authorship, authorship and, and direction. Authorship and direction. And plus, there's uh, some uh, kind of submission in, in a way that a direction may also be issued that who are the person they are supposed to be booked with right. the penal consequences. Yeah, and the tricky part, Mr. which I didn't get a chance to, to use, admit. Use Supreme Court as a political stage, and I'm, I'm sure that the judges may not appreciate it as well. I they, they'll just dismiss the petition. No I don't know. They may now. take it up, no but it's no not fair now. to put pressure on the courts when the government is taking cognizance. Pressure? When when we have to be. Okay. And also okay, to let's use, use, use it Quick as question. a political stage. Quick question. One of the things is when you say Admiral Mike Mullen, if you recall, Hours before his retirement, Admiral Mike Mullen viciously attacked General Kiani and the ISI. So I wonder, I wonder how much this non-paper really affected his thinking. But one, I would like to just briefly ask you to gentlemen. Yeah, I talked uh, about... Some people also say that it has been leaked because the people here did not live up to their part of the deal. <laughs> speculation. Uh, I, 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 I use the word speculation. That would explain a little bit about Mansoor Ejaz's op well, no, That <laughs> gossip has come in reality. Earlier it was gossip. Okay. Now it is not Quick no question. more gossip. Uh, yes and no answers because I'm out of time. Do you think forward blocks are going to emerge in the Pakistan People's Party? So many. <laughs> Mr. Mayokhtar, do you think forward blocks are going to emerge in the Pakistan People's Party? Not, not while uh, Mr. Zardari is in power. 
not from the Chinese authorities at yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will have to leave it there. And I would like to thank all my guests, Safisa Shah, Humayu Akhtar Khan, and Mr. Nasir Bucha, for having taken part in today's discussion. It was fun, it was interesting, and I hope informative for our viewers. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having joined us tonight. Pakistan's political history and culture remains complex for those people who don't know much about it. But the one interesting part about Pakistan's politics and political parties is that on the surface, they may seem to be very divided and disparate, but behind the scenes, there are linkages, relationships, uh, clans, the brotheries, it all is this amazing network which very few outsiders can ever hope to break into. And if true democracy is to flourish in this country, I will borrow from what Mr. Humayun Akhtar said, we need political parties to have democracy, true democracy within their ranks. Nawaz Sharif was elected unopposed. Mr. Bilawal Zardari Bhutto inherited in many ways the party and it was endorsed by the party's CEC. Can any person off the street join a political party and aspire to become the president or the leader of that political party in Pakistan? Until that day happens, democracy will remain just a word, just a myth. Can we ever have a minority like Barack Obama, a black, I used to say, a no black person in his life, in my lifetime, is ever going to become president of the United States? Can I truly today say that an average middle class person with no political background whatsoever can one day be the prime minister of this country? Well, we are all allowed to have our dreams and illusions, and I continue to dream that one day it will be possible. Katrina Sensei for the half history of this